So I understand if it's a little rusty because you didn't do a lot of factoring in geometry where most of you came from, and that's okay. But as we do some here and there, hopefully it will start ringing a bell. And again, I'll teach you in chapter two more specifically how I recommend doing it. So remember your first step to factoring is looking for a GCF, which is what? What does a GCF mean? Yeah, so what is the GCF here? Yeah, we can get two factored out. When you factor out a GCF, you put it out front of parentheses and leave the rest of what you didn't divide out inside. So I call that kind of the leftovers, right? Whatever is not pulled out front is left inside. You cannot drop the two, the, fact, the common factors. Do not just pull it out and forget about it. Because remember, everything we do when we factor needs to be equivalent to the original expression. And if you took the two off, it's no longer equivalent. So, now we look at, can we continue to factor what's in parentheses? And so we're looking for, in this case, for factors of negative 54 that add up to 3. So we're looking, by the way, just as a reminder, we're looking for this, right? We're looking for two binomials that will multiply back to the original. So, how do we, we let's just kind of break it down. How do we make n squared? It's only n times n, and that will go in the first position. Okay, we have multiple ways of making 54. So make a factor list. I tell students, don't worry about sign until you know what numbers you're dealing with. So 54, we could do 1 and 54. We could do 2 and 27. Is there a 3? Yes. Yep, 3 and 18. So... Easiest way to, live, to do your factor list is just start with one and then just go in order for each one that you can do. Like four, there's not one. So I'm going to skip four. Five, there's not one. I'm going to skip five. How about six? Six and nine, right? So we skip four and five. But the next one we can do is six. Seven, no. Eight, no. Nine, now we're back to six. And we're kind of, we're past there, right? So... Out of those, is there a way to make three? And again, we'll worry about signs in a minute. We just need to know if we can make three. Go ahead, Pedro. Good. So in this case, to make 54, we know we want to use 6 and 9. The reason why is because we need to make three by adding. So 6 times 9 makes 54. What do we need to do with those to make positive three when we add? Well plus 9 and negative 6. Double check, negative 6 times 9 is negative 54. Negative 6 plus 9 is positive 3. And so that is now factored. And from there, we will move on eventually to solving using this, these two binomials. Okay, next one. Check for a GCF first. Again, it's 2. And that's, it just happens to be the ones I picked had 2. It's not like a always thing. Then you look to see if you can factor what's inside. And factors of 30. So we're using factors of 30. So 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10. And of those, which ones can we make 15 with? I'm sorry, not 15, 11. I forgot one. There's no 4, 5 and 6. So 5 and 6, right? So again, to make k squared, we know we're going to do k times k. To make 30, we have all those options to, to multiply to 30, but we have to pick the pair that makes 11 when we add, and we know that's 5 and 6. Then we decide on sign, and in this case, they're both positive. So that is now factored. Again, we would take those further to solve once we are in that mode. So have those go. There are technically six factors between these two problems. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hold up how many you got correct out of six. Huh? 
or six factors total. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're holding up how many factors you got correct out of the six. Okay. So it's going well for some of you, some others we need to keep working. And these are the easier cases when once you pull out the GCF, the value in front of the squared term is 1. Those are the easier cases. Uh, not that it ever gets super hard, and I'll show you how to deal with the more complex ones, and it's really not too bad. All right, cool. And let's check in on your homework. So I'll pull those up. Actually, I already have them pulled up, I think. Chapter 3, yeah. Okay, so we started on 85. How many of you checked your answer? Uh, okay, not very many this time. It was one of you over here brought up that it, you can check your answer, but not how to do it. And I get that. On here, you can't actually check what you should have done, just whether or not you got the answer correct. So there's 85 and 87. I know they're small. 85 was negative 5 halves. 87 was negative 8 sevenths. Leave them as fractions. It's totally fine to do that. Any questions on either of those two? Do we need to do either one? Okay. I think, was the next one 101? Yeah. So that one, slope was negative 7, and the y-intercept was at 0, 3, 0, 3. Remember, it is a point. So make sure you're giving the y-intercept with the coordinate pair with the, as a point. Uh, 103, slope was negative 3. Y-intercept was 0, 5. 105, slope was negative 3 halves or negative 1.5, and then 0, 3 for the y-intercept. And 107, slope was 5 halves, and 0, negative 3 for the y-intercept. Any questions on any of those? Those ones were the ones that should have taken, like, what, like 20 seconds apiece, maybe? All right, where did we go? Is, remind me, 23? No. Um, 3.3. 183 to yeah. 193. 83. Oh, that went right past that. Okay. This is where you are writing equations. So 183, y equals negative x plus 8. If you have a negative 1x, is that wrong? No, that's fine. 185, y equals 1 fourth x minus 13 fourths. If you need me to tell you decimals, let me know. 187, y equals 2x plus 5. 189, y equals negative 7 halves x plus 4. 191, x equals 7. That was what kind of line? Even if you didn't do it, you should know x equals 7 is what kind of line? Show me if you are. Aha, very good. Vertical, right? It's all x values, so it's vertical. 193, y equals negative 4. So what kind of line is that? Horizontal. Any of those that you'd like to do? It's okay. We can do, do one or two. Okay. Remember, if you are needing help for anything we've studied so far, Tomorrow is a flex day, so you need, before you leave today, you need to get you a note for your advisory teacher, and then you can come in tomorrow for during advisory. Okay, so if there are no questions on that, and you've done it and checked it, then we're kind of done with slope and writing equations and basic graphing and that kind of stuff for the moment. And we are going to move on back to solving. So here's our goal for today for sure, and probably Friday, but we'll see. And that is linear systems. You have done this. This is the last topic of review for most of you. And then we'll start into newer stuff. 
after the quiz. So your quiz will cover everything we've done so far up to systems of two equations. And that's it's basically a review quiz. Um, for better or worse, I think that's a good thing. So your goal, and you can see where all this is coming from, uh, lesson 1.6 comes out of our algebra book, which after this first unit we get into a lot more. And then also some OpenStack stuff. So your goal is to be able to solve systems. What is a system of equations? If you talk to your parents, some of them might remember this as simultaneous equations. Simultaneous meaning together, or at the same time, but a system of equations. Anybody remember? Okay. I should probably put your phone away here. Engrossed in that. I'll show you one. That's a system of two equations. Does that look familiar? So you'll see two variables, it does not always have to be x and y, that we need to solve for both of them. What are these? If I said graph them, what would they look like? So think back a couple days, actually I think the class before last, we did equations of that form. What were they? Points. They're not points, they're equations of something. So this will be on your quiz. I, I need you to go back and review stuff. How many of you do that? Holy moly. Okay. I want to point out this. I put it up here because it actually is a very good synopsis of how to be prepared for school. You guys are, in general, really good at paying attention in class. All of you. So way to go on that. Take good notes. I haven't seen all of your notes, but I think most of you are. And if you can copy mine, then you're taking good notes. Um, it seems like you're organized. Let me, I'll let you read some of these, but let's go to this one. Review, review, review. It can help you retain 80% of the information. So we have taken, uh, I didn't open it. How many pages? Look at your yellow pages. I think it's like three. Get them out. You're going to need them anyway, so you might as well get them out. Yours is two and a half. Okay. Yours was three. Ish. Okay. How long would it take you to read over those three or four times every single day? How long? She's probably looking to get help with that. <laughs> be, be realistic. How, how long? Five minutes, right? But if you read over those every day, by the time you get to the end of the unit, you won't even need them because it'll all be locked in here. Okay? I remember I took an anatomy and physiology class that was pre-med in college. And the guy, um, we had a textbook that was about this thick with spiral bound. And we basically wrote our own textbook. It was cool. So he, he provided us this printed book, but it didn't have any information and none of the pictures. So as we took notes in class, we had to draw the pictures and we had to write all the notes. And I would go home and read that every night. And that stuff got in my head. Like I, I knew it because I just took a little time, just a little time every day to read it. So do that. Go through and read some examples. If, if when you read a note, you're kind of like, hmm, I don't remember that. Go read it in your notebook, okay? And I don't want this to fall on deaf ears, meaning, oh, he's just saying one more thing that I need to do. I promise it will help, okay? So that comes under this. Review, review, review. And then down here, don't cram for hours the night or day before a test. Study a little bit each day. That's positive. That's effective study. A little bit at a time. Then it gets in there, and you, you know, if you review what we did the first day of class, by the end of the unit, you've reviewed it like 30 times. Then it's cake, right? It's easy. The reason I'm saying that right now is because we did intercepts with these. I'm just going to write it up here real quick. 
So what is the x-intercept of this? You should be able to look at it and tell me. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Get your yellow notes out, and if you're looking at me clueless, don't be a baby, meaning like, here, let me feed you, here's your next bite. Take ownership, grab your notes, and be like, hey, I want to know this, he doesn't need to feed me, I can do it myself. Look it up. Look up your notes where it says intercepts, and figure out how to find the x and y intercepts. So again, if you had read this, like, since then, it's been about five days. If you had read it five times, you would know it, right? How do I find the x-intercept? Set y equal to zero. So look, that is gone. It says 3x equals 7. This is why I say you should be able to do it pretty quickly. So what is x? 7 thirds, right? Just divide by 7. So our x-intercept is 7 thirds, comma, 0. Okay, how about y-intercept? y-intercept. Why is it writing? There we go. Set x. Set x equal to 0. And so that first term <coughs> goes away, and it says negative y equals 7. So what's our y-intercept? 0 negative 7. Again, you need to give it as a point. It's a point on a graph. So, then, in your mind, or on paper, either one, another 10 or 20 seconds, we go plot these. 7 thirds is 3, or 2, excuse me, 2 and a third, so 1, 2, and roughly a third. And then, 0, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's that. What does that make? A line. a line. So even if you don't remember that this is standard form for a line, finding intercepts, graphing them should take half a minute at most. And now you're like, oh, yeah, that's a line. Do that two or three times, and you will never forget that this is a line. Okay? Go ahead and tell, tell me the two intercepts of the other one, just as a review. Four and two. Four and She's done already. Sorry, Alyssa was. Good, get there if you're not. X intercept? Not much to do there, right? So, X intercept, 4, 0. Y intercept, Say it as a point. Zero, negative two. Okay. I'm going to plot it on that same graph. This time I'll plot it in blue. So this one is blue. This one will be the red one. So four, zero. I need to go over one more. And there's that x intercept. And then zero, negative two is there. So this line roughly like that. Okay. That should start giving you a clue as to what we're looking for. Does anybody remember at this point? When we say solve a system, what are we looking for? In the meeting point. The meeting point. Yeah, you said the word first. Intersection. The intersection, right? When we solve a system, we're looking for the point of intersection. So before we even start, I want you to estimate what that point is right there. Even on my ugly sketch. Roughly, where should our answer be? Like, what should our solution be? Sorry, I didn't hear you. All right, I'm hearing this. Two, negative two. If it's not that, it's going to be near it. It's going to be in the ballpark. Do we agree? Okay. How do we solve systems? Like, how do we actually get the value for that point of intersection? You have two, two broad strategies, and then within one of them, you have two pretty common ones. So what did we just do on my informal attempt here? We can graph. 
Grab your graphing calculator, please. Are those two equations graphable? Are they graphable? They are not graphable. Those two equations are not graphable as they're written. So how do you get them graphable? Well, I'll give you a hint. Grab your graphing calculator. Go to y equals this button right up here on the top left. y equals. Okay? What is it probably looking for to graph, at least for a line? y equals what? mx plus b. Are these in mx plus b or slope intercept form? No? Go do it, please. Get them in slope intercept form. Is that, do you just need me to go through it again, real quick? Okay, so here's, guys, if your calculator is fresh from the school or hasn't been used in a while, reset it. So follow these keystrokes. It's second, do it, second plus sign, so addition sign. And then, so second plus, and then seven, one, two. You just hit that series of keys, seven, one, two. That will clear its memory and you won't have to deal with any weirdness, okay? You will have to go enter those equations again. Negative seven plus three X and negative two plus X over two. Then hit graph and we're back to that. Okay, again, I'll go through the trace thing one more time. So to solve for that point of intersection, second trace brings up the calculate menu. Hit five for intersection. And then on these 84s, you should be able to just hit enter. Yes, that was the first equation. Yes, that's the second one. Guess, sure, that looks like a good guess. And there we are back at our intersection. Okay. You can use this to solve systems. You can use this to solve equations. You'll still need to show your work, but you can use it to check your answer. Yeah? I have an inspire. You have a what? Inspire. Uh huh. How do you do that on you? No clue. If you want to come in, we can try to figure it out together. I'll just ask him. Yeah, ask. Because she uses that one more. Guys, that's solving by graphing. You graph the lines, you find out where they cross, and your solution is where they cross. We might deal with linear quadratic. Let me sketch one real quick. Maybe we have a line and a parabola. Okay? Then we would have maybe two solutions, right? Two places where this, where these two interact or cross. We're not going to do that yet, but just keep it in mind. The concept is the same. Where do these two intersect? That's our solution. What? It's second trace. Guys, some of these you might on the trace feature. So when you hit second trace and, it, and you go to calculate, you might have to tell it a left bound and a right bound. Here's what that means. You want to scroll till this cursor is left of your intersection, just visually left of it. So like on mine, if I had to do that, I would, I don't think it's, yeah, there we go. So it's left of the intersection. Then you would hit enter and then it says right bound, which means, okay, Scroll to the right of the intersection. So I'm hitting right, 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 right. And basically what you're doing it is saying, or telling it is saying, look between the two lines that I just told you. So on those kinds, then you would hit enter there, and then enter until you get your intersection. I don't know if that's helpful for that. No, not right now. I'll do it later. So keep that in mind. Hold that question. 
Grab your yellow sheets. Let's write down graphing. Um, I got to load mine. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to kind of make a section break here because we are switching back to systems. So solving systems. First one is by graphing. How many of you, um, if you, if you're doing this calculator, how many of you took notes on how to do it? Good job. You'll remember it next week. Guys, I don't write everything that you might need, so make sure you're writing stuff that you need. First, you need to get equations in graphable form. Graphable form, and I'm going to say as needed because maybe you won't need to, but most likely you will. So get equations in graphable form. Graph the functions on the same axes. Obviously, you need to see them in the same place, otherwise you don't see where they cross. Okay. I'm going to write this in a different color, so if, if you're not taking colorful notes, maybe underline this. So find the points of intersection they are the solutions Give the solution as a point. That says x, y. My comma is a little bit big there. We might also do x, y, z. Actually, we not it not might. We are we are going to solve systems of three equations with three variables. So you will need to also give it as x, y, z in that case. That would be a 3D graph, which obviously these calculators won't do. But they can solve systems of 3, if you know how to do it. Okay. Um, on the side, maybe if you want, you can say... Why is this not switching color? Come on. Say reminder, use the second trace, um, which is calc, right? And then number five on the TI 84. There will be some tests this year where you can't use your graphing calculator because I'll be wanting you to graph it by hand. This first quiz, though, is not like that. So you can solve the systems on your calculator. You won't get credit for that, but at least you can check your answer. Right? So that's kind of nice when you hand your test to me and say, hey, I know those ones are correct because I checked them. Do you want to try one? You want to try graphing one on your calculator? Okay, yeah, let's do it. So, go ahead and solve that one. It says by substitution, but try solving it by graphing first. If you don't have your graphing calculator, better come get graph paper. These both need to be put in graphable form. So get the y by itself. This one's fast. 
So y equals 7 minus 2x. And then a little bit more work on this other one. So we're graphing those two. So 7 minus 2x and negative 3 plus x over 2. We'll double check those. Cool. What happens if you hit graph and it's not showing up on your window? Because that will happen, 100% will happen. My first suggestion would be this. Everybody look here. I don't like a lot of the buttons in Zoom, or a lot of the functions there. But sometimes it's helpful if you hit Zoom. It gives you all these different specific Zoom levels. Probably one of the better ones on here, if you arrow down all the way to the zero, is Zoom Fit. So what it tries to do is tries to put the equations you're looking at in the window. It doesn't always do the perfect job, but it's better than nothing. So if I hit zoom fit, I don't think it will change this much. But you can see how it did zoom a little. Right? It's trying to focus on what they what it thinks is important. If you have what? Oh, so back here, does it matter if those are switched? No. No, that's fine. Yeah, so if you have, as long as you have the sign correct, negative 2x plus 7 is the same. Yeah. Anyway, so we're back here, and we say second trace, which is calc, or calculate. We want to calculate the intersection. So is the first one I want to check 7 minus 2x? Yes. Is the second one negative 3 plus x over 2? Yes. Is that my guess? Sure, why not? You, by the way, you could arrow over there. Just hit the arrow and make it a little closer. Anyway, we get 4, negative 1. So our solution needs to be given as a point. X was 4, Y was negative 1. How, how did, those of you who did it by hand, how did it go by hand? Okay, you got it. Way to go. Guys, if you're graphing by hand and you're trying to find the solution, it is critical that you graph perfectly accurately, which includes using a straight edge to connect points. Okay? Even then, sometimes it might look a little off and you're going to have to just give it your best judgment, but it does. it is pretty effective. You said you got right on 4, negative 1? Yeah. Good job, Bianca. Okay. Questions on solving by graphing? Okay. Uh, one more quick word about that. If I gave you a quadratic linear system, like I said a second ago, so let's say that was one of them, uh, equals, I don't know, 5, whatever. And then 2x plus 4y equals 7. How would you solve those? You don't know how to graph the quadratic yet, by hand, I mean, but you still can do it on your calculator. So how would you graph that to solve? Yes, there is. Again, you don't know how to do the, the parabola, the top one, but yes, you can. You will know after chapter two. Okay, so listen, your notes say what? First step. Freedom, you don't have it in your head yet. First step, get it in graphable form, okay? So this one would be y equals x squared minus 4x, and then we just need the 5 to come over with the 2, so minus 3. This one, we need to get the 4, or excuse me, the y by itself. y equals 7 fourths uh, minus 2, let's call it half. Minus one half x done. Go plug those in. 
Go hit five, uh, second cal five, find the intersection. It's the same. You graph it, you look for the points where they cross, and that's your solution. Okay? So let's see what this looks like real quick. And I, I just made that up. I hope I didn't make one that doesn't actually cross, but I don't think that will be true. So x squared minus 4x minus 3. And then what was the other one? 7 fourths minus 1 half x. So 7 fourths minus, put in parentheses, 1 half x. 7 fourths minus 1 half x. Hit graph, and we see it crosses two places. It happens to fit in our window. And so we hit second trace 5. And this time, is the first curve the parabola? Yes. Is the second one the line? Yes. Okay, this time we need to see two different ones. So, yes, there's a guess. Okay. This time it's going to give us one at a time. We're going to have to do it twice. So there's our first point of intersection. There's our first solution. Negative one-ish and 2.27. Okay, do it again. Second trace, five. Yes, those are the curves I want. This time, you need the arrow over closer to that second one. And hit enter, and there's our second one. So it's the same. You just have to have a more complicated looking graph. Good? Is this useful? Would you like to solve that system by hand? No. That one. Would you like to set those two equal to each other and solve that quadratic with the quadratic formula? You can. It's more work, though. But if you can do it this way, and if it's a problem that says, hey, solve by graphing, then why not, right? Okay. That's this one. Done. In the books. How about algebraically? That, what does that mean? Solving algebraically. Okay. With algebra, that's like steps on the paper, right? That's like, hey, subtract here and divide this and do that. So you've heard of substitution and elimination, I hope. You guys remember them at all? Or just remember their names? Okay. Do you have a favorite? I think you'll be convinced after we finish this unit that elimination is way better, especially when we have three, three equations and three variables and it's like 10 or 12 steps. But I'm not going to try to convince you of that too much. If you like substitution, that's what you do. So let's write this one down. I'll do an example and then we'll write steps. We just did it as graphing, so we know our solution should be 4, negative 1, but let's go solve it by substitution. Obviously we should get the same thing. When should you use substitution? You should be able to look at a system and just immediately say, hey, this is a good one to use substitution, and this one is not. Yeah. yeah, if it's easy to get a variable by itself, or if it's already given that way, then definitely. So our first step is to get one of the variables by itself, so we have a, an expression to plug in for the other one. Which one would you like to get by itself? Which one do you think is easiest to do that on? Which letter? Did you say why? What did you say? Okay. And it's, it can totally be personal opinion, honestly. All right. If I did x, I would add 2y. That's pretty easy. If I did y, I would subtract 2x. 
So I don't really care which one it is, but I'll just pick the first one. So y minus 2x. Do you see how we got y by itself? Okay. So now we're going to take that expression. It says y is also known as, or is the same as, 7 minus 2x. So we're going to take that expression into the other equation where y goes. That's the substitution part. So plug in an equivalent expression. So our new equation is x minus 2. Plug that in for y. 7 minus 2x equals x. And why did we do that? Like, looking at that last thing I wrote, what did we accomplish? Yeah, awesome. Say it. Say it loud, yeah. Pedro. Yeah, you cannot solve one equation with two variables. Now we have one equation with one variable. So we are ready to solve. x minus 14 plus 4x equals 6 etc. 5x minus 14 equals 6. Add your 14. Divide by your 5. Okay? If you need me to write those steps out, let me know. Well, that's half of it. How do we get the other one? Plug that back in for x. Which equation would you plug it into? That can be personal opinion also. I think I would probably just plug it in the top one. So 2 times 4. Let me write it first. So make x 4. And the reason I picked this one is because y is positive. We don't need to worry about dividing by negative 1, or in, in that case, negative 2. Are we done? Say that again? <clears throat> no, I was just confused. Why don't you have to use the other equation? Well, once we have a value, once we have a value for the variable, we can use any equation. I could plug it there, there, or there. Technically, I could have plugged it there, too. So you pick which one works best for you. That's once you have a value. Okay? Are we done? Yes or no? Parker, are we done? Yeah. Okay. So we don't need to write it as a point? Yeah, we do, right? This is a point of intersection, so we need to finish by writing 4, negative 1. Do not forget to write your, your answer, your solution as a point. Substitution. If you're using substitution, it's probably going to be kind of easy. I wouldn't use it if it's not. Let's quickly write down the steps for that. <coughs> see how our time looks. I do want you to write when to use this right underneath it, so hopefully it catches your eye. When, use when it's easy to get x or y by itself. And guys, remember x and y just represents, those represent the variables. It could be a and b or h and k or whatever else. Okay, first step. Get a variable by itself. All 
I would recommend choosing the easiest one. But maybe that's that's kind of subjective. Maybe for you X is, maybe someone else thinks Y is, like we saw a second ago. Okay. Next, you're going to substitute the expression for that variable, the isolated variable, into, and this word is important, maybe I'll put it as a different color. This is where it's important to plug it into the other equation. If you plug it back into itself, you've kind of just gone in a circle. So plug it back into the other equation. And you need to make sure that you plug it in for all occurrences, right? For any occurrence. of the variable. So it may be C X in three places. That expression needs to go in for all three of them. Okay, step three. Solve for the other variable. That could be multiple steps. So even though we write it as one step, it might take you on paper like four steps. Just be aware of that. Okay, almost done. Plug the value for the solved variable. into 1, into, I'm going to say, another. Okay, so let's all plug it into another equation and solve for the remaining variable. And then don't forget Write the solution as a point. So, sorry, go back here. So I'm going to have you go back and we're going to solve this first one by substitution. Oops, wrong button. So you know, we already solved this one graphically, you know that it should be 2, negative 1. See if you can solve that one to get 2, negative 1 by substitution. Okay, so I chose to isolate x in the second equation because it was one little step. Just subtract 2y, I didn't have to worry about dividing a negative off. Okay, I took that 4 plus 2y and substituted it into equation 1. We want to label those, so substituted x, the x expression into equation 1, and went through and solved for y. Then took that and substituted, this time I substituted into the isolated x equation, because it was just a quick check then. And then, of course, we got the solution in point form, and we know it was correct because we already did it graphically. How could you check, though, that it is the solution? You don't have your graphing calculator and want to know. How can you be sure it's the solution? Okay, plug it in is a little bit more involved this time. What do we plug it into? Sorry, what? Plug both points in, right? Into what? Both. Somebody said that. We have to plug it into both equations because it may be true for one but not the other. Okay? So take 2 and negative 1 and make sure both of these are true. In fact, as a reminder, I want you to put that on here. So 2, I don't know, that's probably getting too busy. I think I'm going to get to 
the new new box here to check. This will be short. Plug the values found into both. Actually, I'm going to say all because again, we're going to be doing three equations. All equations to see if they're all all true. So it's a little more involved on the check for a system. Okay, I need to know kind of where you guys are with this. We have about 12 minutes. It probably isn't enough time to check or to start elimination, at least I don't think so. So I'm thinking give you some practice on solving by graphing and substitution for Friday. Friday will cover elimination and start review, and then probably quiz Tuesday. Yeah. I will. So listen, Friday elimination. Do some practice with that just that day. I'll give you a review, which is you might as well call it a practice quiz. You'll take that, do it the rest of class, do it over the weekend. Tuesday quiz, Thursday NWEA. Okay? We do have to finish that next week. So here's some problems for you. Is everybody done with that note? Okay. So let me get through the substitution stuff. This is what you'll be reviewing. So solve by graphing. Actually, I think I'll have you do it this way. These are your instructions from me. So solve by substitution. This is not optional. And check by solving by graphing. I'll put a picture of this on Google Classroom, but we do have time. So you are going to start. And this comes out of OpenStax 4.1. So OS stands for OpenStax 4.1. And we're going to go with numbers. How many do you need? Five or six, yeah. good? Yeah. So 35, 7, 9, 41, 3, 5. Okay, so you'll do 35 to 45 odd. 35 to 45 odd. So you're going to solve them by substitution, then go check them on with graphing. If you have a graphing calculator, you're going to use that to check them, okay? Look, listen, I mean, you're looking at me. This is not something I, the, the graphing part, unless you do it by hand, I can't really check if you did it. So don't think, hey, how can I get around this? Think, hey, how can I know how to do this so I can check my work on my test next week, okay? Um, if you don't have a graphing calculator, I would... Use this as motivation to get one by Thursday. And I still have forms in that basket in the back. Please start this and work till the bell. Are you going to also post it on the Google Um, I can post the link, sure. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Is it sports? Yeah. I forgot you do something. Huh. So do you know the trade? I have, I have Riley, Jillian, Sophie, Chloe. Are you on the same team with all of them? Um, yeah. Are you a team leader? I'm ready to you. You are? Okay. What position? 
Do you get a lot of balls hit to you in softball? Yeah, I get most of the balls. You do? That's kind of cool. And you don't have to be bored. All right, I'm going to post the link if you're needing that to find your work. So it's posted. I'll need to go in and add everything from class. So, But right now it's just the link. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Also, what do I do about... So, so how can you get up with it? I Yeah, so that was because I had realized I could just put it all together. So, okay. I see you were waiting for that. Okay. I don't know. So, I don't know. 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 I do I think that was all right. Yeah. Um, who was the other? Was it Rodney? Was it you who needed to show me? It was Bruce. Okay. <laughs> Let me get his homework put in and then I'll get you real quick. Oh, no, so it looks like you're open. Yeah. But um, it was just. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. 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 If you could get, yes, any of those. They'll probably, they'll, I'm not sure they'll get this I think they'll probably. Okay. Uh, was this stuff listed in the classroom? Okay. Hey guys, I'll be right back. I need to run grab something off the top of your other day. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 